So welcome back guys, I had to fix a few issues here and there and we are back and ready to go for the next game here in the first wave playoffs. My name is Stax and joined me still is Mr. Billy and we got a next match coming our way. It is time now for Overwine versus Cakes and it's a really interesting matchup coming our way because Overwine coming in with a victory over Washed Up Homies who could make it unfortunately and in the meantime Cakes eking at that against Uba server. Any thoughts? Coming into this first match, Mr. Billy. Uh, I'm pretty sure Cakes are like coming in from that uh, victory high, so you know you can you can already tell that they're gonna be in good spirits against Overwine. And Overwine on the uh, this on the other hand is going to be has obviously uh, prepared uh, very well against for this upcoming match. Um, you know, uh, I've seen in their, I've seen them going for their VOD reviews and their practice scrims. So, you know, I'd say they're extremely prepared for this match, and yeah, I, I expect to see you know a very nice, close, and interesting match. Yeah, it's really gonna be interesting because this is gonna be one to make it to find out who is gonna be facing off against Team Meme Gord into the next one so this is our second second round matchup and this is gonna be looking for positioning here in the upper brackets overine versus cakes whoever wins this will be playing against team meme card instead and in a situation like this who do you think might have the advantage will it be cakes having that experience or overine with the extra rest i would honestly say anything can go because of the fact that you have cakes with their very unconventional team comps, uh, while you have Overwine, who likes to do like very methodical analysis of like their opponents. So like they like to really study up on uh, what what heroes each player likes to pick and you know stuff like that. So you know it's gonna be interesting to see how both teams will go about their this match. Yeah, it's gonna be really really interesting to say the least, and hopefully. We are able to fix any network issues going on right now for the stream because, well, you know, stuff like that happens in the Philippines so, so constantly. It's really, really tiring. But we are going to be getting into our first match in just a bit. And it is going to be Nepal yet again. Interesting, we saw Legion Tower today. Now we're seeing Nepal. What what do you think is going to be the plan here for Team Cakes? They are the higher seed and they are going to be looking to maybe surprise the opposition with some different comps here and there. Yeah, I'm uh, honestly surprised that Shiver is playing that tank role. <laughs> I don't, is, I'm actually going to ask that. Is that, that. right? I'm that actually right? going to ask that. But yeah, any kind of thoughts for the roles and stuff? Because right now, you know, everyone knows this, this is a Genji meta. And Shiver is by far their, like, most known Genji player. Oh, wait, I think, yeah, I think they made a mistake. <laughs> no joke. I'm just like, you guys are, you guys are me. Yeah, because you really... Because you know, if you're playing like uh, X Fatal is on that Anna, uh, you you you'd obviously want that um, you obviously want that uh, Shiver Genji to benefit from that Nano Blade. Yeah, it's just <laughs> these guys. Oh my God, they're already pointing fingers. They're like children right now, Mister Billy. But I think we are just gonna get a clarification of their roles. So it is going to be more standard. It's stereo on tank and Shiver on DPS. And exactly what you were saying, it is a Genji meta. And we have seen Shiver impress really on that Genji multiple, multiple times. Yeah, and I, I think oh, like, I think also like Overwind's um, Dominici, I believe, is the Genji player, or Kethral. I, but I know one of the two like playing Genji, and we're obviously probably seeing Tash on her signature Ana. So... You can already see you can already see the Battle of the Blades. Yeah, I can really expect it coming into this one, but we are gonna be getting into our first match of this second match. The first map rather of the second match. And it seems like it is gonna be the same starting point here, Mr. Billy. It's Overwind versus Cakes. We are gonna be getting into Shrine first and foremost. Shrine and again. here we go again. Back to Nepal. I wanna see Village, bro. No, we're not getting it right now. It's Shrine to start things off. And it is gonna be Overwind versus cakes now in all honesty overwind in a pretty surprising position right here 
able to move to the second round. They were both faced off against really, really tough test that was washed up homies. But of course, because of the miracle of childbirth, they were unable to show on up. So this is time for Overwind to prove to us that they deserve to be in the second round. They deserve to move on to the next part of the upper bracket. And they are here to stay and play. Dominici going to be playing that Echo Keltral onto the Farah. Double flyers right here right now. And at least they have the mercy to pocket them in the long run. It's interesting to see Wotash uh, if she actually does stick on that bat because, you know, the the Matrix, no one really is going to be benefiting from that Matrix except for probably Bedra or maybe Wotash plans on using it for themselves. Yeah, it seems like this is going to be yeah. for the tank line. They are going to try to survive with the Batiste as much as possible. And it seems like here for Team Cakes, they are going to be going for the Symmetra Strat rather than the Lucia Speed Boost. So it's Shiver lagging on behind, using that Teleporter to set up the team and go for the push. This is Cakes on the red side versus Overwind on the left. And we are going to be getting into the second match of the night, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first wave playoffs, and we are just right here right now, live in the Philippines scene. Overwind right now, though, making it rain with some rockets from the side, but Cakes is in firm position onto the point but as I say that black are already getting one brawl between the two Reinhardts cakes with the first capture but without X Fatalist this sustain is gonna be looking very difficult here for cakes so far. Yeah this is the uh, this is the, I think this is the comp that uh, the what do you call this overwind wants uh, cakes to be playing because you can see the double flyer and if you look on the cake side no one can really deal with that. It doesn't matter that uh, X Fatalist is playing the Ana. What Ana wants to be doing is healing the tanks and not dealing with the fire. Yeah, it's just so difficult for X Fatalist to get that early Nana boost. It's not going to happen anytime soon. Wotash, though, in the meantime, Amp Matrix is ready to go. And Overwind trying to duel right here, right now. Here we go, though, with the setup oh. from the application. Beach Matrix there. Blackrock, though, in the meantime, with a tag on the one. And Keldral making it rain with the Rocket Barrage. It seems like for Team Overwind, they are looking to experiment and looking to exploit matchups like this. Double Flyer is looking very, very potent in a meta without any hits scans on the other side and Overmind right now doing all they can to impose their will from the skylines. Uh, those are, uh, I, I was gonna say that was gonna be a very questionable matrix there because it's out in the open but Bedro uh, Black Rock play, uh, using it to his advantage and getting the surprise uh, fire strike damage kill onto uh, uh, Olexeed. Yeah, what a setup so far and here we go though yet again gonna be looking to just get in position here. Cakes though struggling to have any momentum to say the least. And they are going for the top so far. Dominici though eating a little bit there with the focusing beam. Trying to get some DPS on yet again. Here comes Black Rock right now. Trying to survive. I feel again set up from Wotash. And the grab of the surge absolutely huge here from Guinness so far. Overwind right now looking for the best setup that they can do. Alexeed right now forcing things out with the coalescence. But Cakes doesn't really have too much momentum right now. They get a really good shatter onto two. But there is going to be no casualties whatsoever. Sustained game strong here from Overwind with the Mercy and the Batiste so far. Really good top-up game from both Kundak and Rotash. And this is Overwind right now showing up in full force. What an improvement here for Team Overwind. Yeah, I, I, I just also like to point out that Dominici is doing an extremely well job of zoning out Oily Beer. Like every time Oily Beer wants to set up and get an attire in, uh, Dominici is there to stop him and prevent any form of jump cut spam damage whatsoever. Yeah, and the, the double flyer really doing so much against the junk rat. There is nothing Oily Beer can really do in a scenario like this, but Oily Beer will still make it go. And here comes the Riptire trying to find a target or two. Keltra will get that shutdown instead. Dominici turning into the McCree down below and Overwind getting the zone on. This is now. Kryptonite play from Overwind. This is really them aging like a fine wine and doing the best they can in the playoffs. Really good read on the opposition and they shut down the Junkrat's player. Uh, so that was an uh, incredible team play there by Overwind. Um, you, you got both the Sky Comp and the Ground Comp. Uh, perfect uh, synergy and harmony where you know you have Wotash always getting that insane uh, Matrix, uh, Matrix old speed because of the fact that She's the only one healing both Blackrock and Guinness while Kondak is just swapping between Dominici and Ketral in the sky. And it really just goes to show when there is going to be a little bit of that swap around action, there is just no one dying, especially if you only have one DPS to deal with too. So kind of a little bit of a struggle there, but here we go though. Yet again, Overwind right now, we are going to be getting into Village. So it seems like your quest has been fulfilled here, Mr. Billy. But Overwind with the advantage, and this is very, very surprising. 23 kills to 5. This has been a completely different Overwind showing up with their new identity. Yeah, but now we see Shiver though with uh, with Afara, so we're gonna see a big battle of the skies here. 
Yeah, Keltrel trying to chase after Oil Beer there. The Junkrat just hopping on away yet again. In the meantime, Wotash right now setting up with the I feel one more time. Keltrel though making it rain. And there is just nothing Oil the Beer can do against both the Farah and the Echo. This is the perfect map here for Override in all honesty. Even though this was Cakes' map pick, there's all the open space right now working out in their favor. And look at this. First catcher ready for Override. Oil Beer has to swap. This Junkrat is not going to work whatsoever against a comp like this because Keltrel is looking absolutely dominant. I, I agree completely agree with you, the ducks. Like the both the pressure from Dominici and Catral combined, along with the, that mercy damage boost, uh, allows them to, to to bully the the John Crack both in game and I'm pretty sure mentally too, because I don't think he wants to be picking any corners anytime soon. Yeah, it seems like they had a little bit of those technical issues there in the regular season. Override in the meantime showing up in full force here instead. Well, here we go though with a little bit of the push against there. Gonna be out in front. Oily Beer in the meantime making it rain just a little bit more. And the custom mind tossed out there. The Zara though gonna be out in front yet again. There we go with the trigger. Dominici gonna make it happen. Oily Beer though with the total mayhem kill. That ability oh, has been God. buffed. Kamikaze indeed right there. Rocks in the lawn with the push right now with Stereo. And it seems like they are just bringing in the beats again. Team Cakes right now finally playing to a better degree and they are going to be able to get the capture that Paul Village really enhanced by those Reinhardt Zarya compositions in CQC. Yeah, I, I was very surprised too. They're like the the surprise Junkrat trap caught Guinness and did not allow him to get heals from, uh, from Tash because of the fact that Tash was blocked off by the enemy Reinhardt. Just for the shutdown right here right now, and here we go though with Rock Barrage from Shiver instead. Oily Beer trying to do a little bit more. Keltrol in the meantime with a danger throws Rock Barrage there. And it's just a little too ambitious from Overmind, but Dominici still surviving. Stereo now gonna be backing on out again. Guinness in the meantime taking his damage there. And the Reinhardt looking to survive is still even more. But no, 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 sir. Stereo is gonna get caught there. X Fatalist does have the Valkyrie, but will not pop it here. Will get popped down by Dominici instead. And it seems like for Team Overwind, they're just getting these free kills here and there. There is not much contest from Cakes. They're a little hesitant to use their abilities in desperate scenarios. It's a little bit of a responsibility per se, of course, to keep your ultimates in check, but to playing too passive, that's kind of hurting Cakes right now. Yes, I, I agree with that. Like, I love the fact that uh, Kunda uh, reactively used her the, the that uh, Valkyrie that allowed both Guinness and Dominici to do so much damage with uh, no fear of death. No spear whatsoever. Here we go, though, with only beer going for that Reptire. And that's going to be an easy takedown yet again. Duplication, though, is available here for Dominici. And Overwind with the advantage. Grab the search now. Eight to play does get three so far. An absolutely huge stuff here from Overwind, but not enough contest, not enough follow up there. Coalescence, though, now going to be into play. Alex Seed trying to get the drain onto Guinness there. Dominici now turning into the Reinhardt. Doesn't get too much shiver in the meantime. Plane danger close again. And Team Cakes is just going for the standard Reinhardt protection. It doesn't matter if they're playing far on the ground as long as Stereo is in front of everyone for that tank line to stay on. Incredible charge by Stereo. He both not only stopped the duplicate uh, of uh, Dominici, but he also stopped the shatter. Like, Dominici got his shatter pretty fast because he managed to swing at the right hand like three times. But because Stereo charged him mid shatter, the, the shatter was cancelled and he got the duplicate kill. Yeah, Cake still survives here. They are gonna be looking for a one fight territory scenario, but Wotash in the meantime with the app matrix. And here comes the push already from Team Overwind. Beautiful block though from Blackrock. And Guinness gets two instead. The Zarya getting a little bit of that energy on. And Roxy the lawn to the floor. No Mariachi bad this time. Shiver though with a bailout play will get blown up instead. And Overwind gets the re take there. Last chance here for Team Cakes. Stereo gonna be rolling on around one more time, but he is getting blown to bits. And Overwind has taken. Taken a map here. They have shown up again, similar to Meme Gord, a completely different beast in the playoffs. I would say this is this is Overwind's best performance. But it's incredible how how they're able to not only rotate the use of their ulties, but also use it reactively that uh, allows them to win team fights wherein you actually think that they should lose. It's 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 very refreshing to see uh, how how much of an improvement um, Overrun has uh, sh shown from their new wave uh, new wave experience. Like you could say, like new the new wave has actually improved Overwine. You know, like you said a while ago, you know, aged wine always tastes better. Yeah, and keep it clean, guys, in the chat, please. You know, please, please, please support your favorite teams, but. 
uh, there's just a lot to unpack there from Team Overwine. What's a performance? What a show? And in all honesty, I didn't really expect a dominant, dominant, you know, what did we just witness from Overwine? It, it seems like they just understand exactly what to do against Team Cakes, especially seeing Oily Beard there on that roster. It's like, ah, far echo, that Junkrat can't touch us. Yeah, I, I like, you, like uh, it's like uh, the point I made a while ago, Dax. Overwine has done their homework. They they know what Cakes likes to play. And they're right now, what they're doing, they're putting into good use. They're playing uh, comps that are not only comfortable for them, but allows, but also, but also comps that makes Cakes very uncomfortable with their picks. And just what an improvement here from Keltrol. The, the far up play from Team Overwine. Just his way air too shots, strong. His air shots, dude. They, they control the He's air. He's been landing so much air shots. They yeah. control everything. They control a 360 sphere. It's like they own the world right now. And it's, it's just Cakes trying to find a place to call home. But Overwine saying, no, sir, you are not going to be going anywhere. It's just ridiculous on how potent... Overwind is playing with that double flyer composition, and it really feels like they have really done that. It's a whole new team. It's a. It's not. It's not just a whole new team setup. It's just they're putting their smarts into use because we know Overwind is a very very hardworking team. So they do these extra things like research. They do these things like having profiles of the opponents, and when you have someone easily profile like Oily Bear who plays that chunk rat. And Overwine is comfortable playing the Far and the Echo together. So that is where they can truly shine. That is where they can really do their best. And in essence, they are going to be able to take control of this game so far. And it seems like we are going to be getting into the next map in just a bit. But before anything else, Billy, what can Cakes really do, per se, to try and change things up? I'd really think uh, if Oily Beer really wants to play that Junkrat, I think for this uh, for this upcoming match, if they're expecting Overwind to be playing that double fly, I think they really need to sub him out. Because yeah. unless he, if unless he wants to change heroes, he really needs to swap the swap his swap heroes because. Right now, he's just being being bullied by both Dominici and Kethrel. Yeah, there's just no way. There is just nothing the Junkrat can really do in a scenario like that. As much as amazing Junkrat Oily Beer is, it's it's really just that matchup. It's literally trying to play scissors against rock in rock, paper, scissors. You're never going to win. Like There are times that you can really surprise because Overwatch is a more complicated game. But in, in essence, it's just such a grenadier on the ground versus flyers and unless you really can get that perfect arc on, you're not going to be hitting the Farah, and especially the Echo, who's a lot faster than that. Actually, Dux, uh, do, do, does, do, do both teams know that they can sub out players like right now, like after each map? Yeah, I, I know them on the, 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 these guys know that they can sub. There is no... They should be, I'll just remind them per se, but we are going to be getting into a second map very soon, and it is going to be Hollywood. So any thoughts coming into map number two? Cake's picking another map, though, that it's very open. And if Overwind does the same thing, ah, I'm not really feeling these map picks from Cake's right now. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. But I think Cake's is respecting the fact that Overwind's best map is King's Row. And I don't think they want to play King's Row against Overwind. I mean, there's still another map to pick, right? We have three for the first three map types. There's also Icon Wall to play. And it does op start open, but it does get closed up pretty well on to the third point. Okay, I guess you can say the same thing about Hollywood. And I think that they do feel that this might be a lot more comfortable for them instead of, well, the other maps on to the pool. So, yeah, it's like cakes, they have to be very wary. They have to be make, making sure that they are comfortable and ready to go for this next map because this do or die time, Overwind has already brought in the surprise and they are basically in prime position here to take the match and to move on to the semifinals. But the fight isn't over yet, Billy. As we move into Hollywood, it's time to get into map number two and this is going to be match point for Team Overwind. Yeah, I... I, I but... Um... I'd also like to say that I, if Overwind plans on playing their previous comp, I really don't think this should be the map where you play BAP. I believe that Ana in Hollywood is extremely potent and very good. 
because you have that anti-nade for when they step onto the point and you have that nano that nano boost that can go to either the Reinhardt, the Zarya or the double flyers. And you know that that boost makes a key difference. I do can't make a point for the Zenyatta also unless you really are going to be dealing with that twin flyers on the other side. But Cakes, I, there is one thing, okay, that works out for Olivier. This is first point Hollywood. And we all know from season one, this has been one of the best points to play a junk rap because of the arc raid right there covering the flyers from getting some free shots. Oily Beard can take control of the choke point in the first place, so it's gonna be time for Oily Beard to prove that this is gonna be a proper pick. It also hurts for Cakes that I believe Blackbeard is suffering from CTS carpal tunnel syndrome, so they can't really play their flexible DPS there. So it's up to Oily Beard to make sure his slot is secured, to make sure that this junk rat pick works because on the other side, it's not gonna be double flyer it's gonna be ash and reaper dominici back on his comfort pick yeah but I, i'm surprised that like they're running that uh, lucio bap because you know on paper it may look okay but uh i'd honestly say like maybe the bap should be better suited to have an honor i mean i'd say dude, you can change the lucio yeah, in all honesty you can yeah, play the break you know, take the yeah, we'll find out soon, but for now, Cakes is proving us right. They are just defending into the arcway so far. They have that Ryan Diva together yet again. And Shiver, in the meantime, gonna be looking stabilized for the time being. Fire Strike, though, tossed out there by Blackrock. Cakes is gonna be holding on for dear life so far. And it seems like it is a good start here for Cakes. They're not getting overrun yet. And as we say, Oily Beer is having a time of his life on this first point. Yeah, and right now, uh, Overwind releases really do something about that trash damage. To do the, the trash one. damage that the pump the junk is probably have is so it's so insane. Yeah, it really is, but the resurrection absolutely huge there. Eric getting the opportunity and the shatter from Roxy Lalonde. Big, Big slam right there to get those kills. And Team Cakes will be able to hold on yet again. Only need to clean up onto the support line as well as the ash, but that is gonna be a big one there from Roxy. Uh, that uh, that shatter was insane, dude, uh, Dax, because he not only got the front line, but also the shatter managed to reach the back line, stopping any form of damage that uh, Overwind wanted to do with that Matrix. And it really just goes to show what a big shutdown right there, and they are looking for just a little bit more again. We got Roxy Lalonde though, setting up yet again out in front. Blackrock right now gonna be out in front one more time. And here comes Trouble, here comes the push. Gravitas Surge now gonna be into play instead. Shiver though with an Anibu stand eye. There we go with a multitude of ultimates. Explosions are about. Team Cakes right now giving us the Shiver show. And he is just trying to get the destruction on yet again. They see the Farah though, trying to back on that. That's the honor looking to survive. It's still not gonna happen. Alexi also with a Valkyrie there. And wow, Team Cakes is now playing a lot better compared to that first map. Yes, but I think also uh, Overwind should be happy because they managed to burn uh, four ultimates there uh, from from the side of Cakes, and if they can stop that tire of Oily Bear, they should they should be have oh never mind. Uh, they do get rid of Dominici, that's huge because double flyers come online. But as I said, this is a really good choke point here for Cakes. And since Shiver is on the McCree, he will have clear sight lights every single time the double flyers get the transition on. And since Overwind did not start with his composition, they are going to be working hard to get those ultimates. One real chance here for Overwind so far, looking at the ult economy, because Cakes can set the tempo with the Riptire as well as the Dead Eye. Yes, and I, I actually would like to see uh, oh, both Guinness and Blackrock swap into a dive comp. Because having double flyers with dive not only stops the McCree from getting free shots, but also can mitigate Oily Bear's junk rat spam damage with that Diva Matrix. And look at those bounces here from Oily Bear, making sure that he gets the proper angle on again and again and again. A little bit of the push right now. Farah Mercy coming in from behind. Good chance though here for Overwind to try and mitigate this defense. But Ananib was now gonna be into play instead. Dead eye though from the side! Shiver with a huge flag! He gets two, getting torn apart though by Guinness. But the Riptire is on an adventure and it wants to go for the Reinhardt, dodging as much as possible. Oily Bear very pesky. Blackrock right now will go down. There we go with the far strike again. Shatter now available here for Roxy. And we'll see if T. Team Cakes and hold the line out in front. Shatter kind of wasted there. No targets whatsoever, but they will take it still. Cakes right now. 10 seconds left on this defense. It is going to be Overwind trying to make sure that they can get the touch with Blackrock. Will it make it out? I don't think so. Shatter we go with the Shatter. There we go with the charge on in, but it's a little too late. And Cakes gets the full hold. Yeah, this is the the performance we that Cakes is known for. That signature Junkrat spam damage alongside that Shiver carry. 
like Shiver, Shiver's um, Shiver's flank there was insane. He got that dead eye by surprise and caught both the fire mercy off guard. Just so, so much. In all honesty, there is just the junk rat enjoying his time there again and again and again, and it really just feels like this is. You know, we, we kind of were a little bit doubting in a way from Cakes and the map pick, but we we initially forgot that the Junkrat can get a really good chokehold. And Overwind kind of playing into the clutches, per se, of Team Cakes, not really starting out with that double flyer, not trying to get that kind of information. And if they really just found a way to beat back that McCree, they could have had the best time of life with a composition they have already proven in per se. But really good points here from Cakes. Really good points from you. Hollywood seems like to be the best choice for them in the three hybrid map pool. I just like to point out that like a while ago remember in in the other in the previous map, uh mid match, uh Cakes only had five kills through the game. Right now, Overwine <laughs> has five kills through the game. Oh no, it's, it's a little bit of a topsy turvy right here, right now, but we are going to be getting yet again into the next one. So we will find out if Cakes can tie things up. They only need one tick to actually get this one going. If they don't, then we will see a draw and we will move on to map number three. But we'll find out soon if Cakes can get the tire here. They are pushing with the Ryan Diva. They still have Oily Beer on that Junk Rat. And this time, it's the Double Flyer gonna be looking to push around, of course, on the defense. Overwind looking to mitigate whatever Shiver and Oily Beer want to do in the first place. And they are just holding on for dear life. I think right now, uh, th this uh, this comp is very good against Reinhardt because the spam damage is just so much that the Reinhardt shield just completely gets destroyed. Oh. Look at that. Overwind just destroying the opposition as you say. They find a little bit of the angle and they get rid of Roxy and Oli Beer already. Shiver though does get attack on back. X Fatalist has proven to be the god of the Anas. Huge nano boost onto the Diva to keep him alive. Huge sleep time. Huge bar grenade. And X Fatalist is doing all he can for his team. Cakes right now just being saved by the Anas so far. Absolutely ridiculous there from X Fatalist. And one support has turned the tide of this five. Team Cakes is just making sure that they will use what X Fatalist has given them to the best degree, and you cannot spell fatality without Fatalist there. Apparently, it's gonna be Cakes getting that victory. What a show from the Ana. Yeah, this is this is an incredible incredible match that X because you saw a while ago the dominant force of Overwine, and in this match you see the dominant force of Cakes. God though, that Ana. I just got chills there from X Fatalist. Shiver though. With play of the game, that is the power of the McCree, if given in the right spots. And you can see the problem of a map like this. Without the map control on the high ground, the rooftops are something the Flyers need to take. And, you know, before we get into our casting screen, I just gotta show you guys real quick what amazingly happened there. It, it was just, it was just so, so potent. From X Fatalist, huge sleep darts and all the like, doing all he can for the team. And wow, 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 we are all tied up now, one to one. Yeah, it's it. This, this is the this is the what do you call this? This is the first time we're we'll actually hitting uh, map three. Yes, sir. We are actually gonna be getting into the escort map type, and it's just absolutely incredible to say the least. So it is Overwind's map pick. And then Cakes is the side, and it seems like, you know, this match is really going to be going down to the wire. Meme Guard going to have an extra time, of course, to just look at both of their opponents. But they are, uh, they have to be taking notes because there have been many incredible things that both Cakes and Overrun have brought out to the table so far. Yeah, I completely agree there. Like, you'd, you'd think Overwine almost uh, had it in the bag uh, during the Hollywood match, but no. Cakes made a point, like, Hey, we are the third seed for a reason, and we are here to stay. Exactly. And even though that junk rat of Oily Beer has its weaknesses, he has shown its pure strength. And good research there from Cakes. Proper positioning, especially like the complementary of the McCree, making a key difference. Without that McCree play from Shiver, this wouldn't have worked whatsoever. So you gotta give props to Shiver right there. But... X Fatalist, he can take my running money and just run away with it. Impressive stuff on Diana, to say the least. Just, oh my god, that last play with the bio grenade, with the sleep darts, with the clutch nano boost to keep the diva alive. He did everything he could 
to keep his team up and it paid dividends because that could have been a race at every cakes. Yeah, I completely agree. I honestly, me, I honestly thought that like uh, cakes was playing for that nano blade. Like I was, I was, I was thinking like the the match would go down to the wire to the last minute and you'd see shiver with that nano boost and just pretty much clean up over wine. But no, X Fatalist says. If I want us to win this match right now, I will do it myself. And just, he has done it and more. So, so incredibly done by x Let's really give commentations to him. And that is how you play Diana, guys. That is how you play Diana. It's, it's just so... You just have to be quiet sometimes. And I also like that, though, that... Yeah. that like that, like X Fatalist was the first standout Anna we had here in New Wave. Yes. During the, like this is the X Fatalist is the reason why everyone is playing Anna now. <laughs> I agree. I completely agree. And it is just been an incredible time to say the least. You know, there have been many, many key players of the New Wave Invitationals. That's why we had that whole regular se season shindig, and seeing them now just bloom into amazing players has been. Absolutely incredible. Uh, just we're just gonna be making sure that our overlay is good to go for our next map. We figured out the issue for the scoreboard. We kind of just have every time we press swap all, we have to load up another map just to reset the whole thing. And I guess we will be good to go. So we have gotten confirmation of our third map, ladies and gentlemen. And we are gonna be going into the waters of Rialto. Any thoughts though coming into this one? Uh I'm I'm honestly not really sure that because this is the first time I'll be seeing Overwine and Cakes play Rialto if I could remember because usually the the map picks for I've seen these two teams play are like uh, Dorado or they play like Gibraltar so you know anything goes here. Because this is this can also this can be a junkrat map, this can be a fire map, this can be a McCree map. So, any honestly, anything goes here. Yeah, it really is. I love Rialto because it gives you so many opportunities, and I think for Overwine, this is a great, great pick. Because Rialto first and second points are so good for the Farah uh, Echo Show. On the third point, that is where they're gonna be suffering against the junkrat. That's for sure. But getting there a long way and. High map control on the defensive. We have seen Afara dominate every single time on Rialto. This this feels like this is a really, really well picked effort by Team Overwine. Yes, sir, I completely agree. And uh I'd really like to see the what we saw from Cakes that last map and Overwine from their first map. The best performance that both teams can can do. And I hope to see a really good battle here. Yeah, and it's time to now to get into the map. We are going to be going into Rialto. And this is now the match point for votes. Only one can move on to the semifinals. Only one can move on in the matchup against Team Meme Court. It is third seed versus seventh seed. But you wouldn't know. It really just goes to show how close the opposition can truly be in the New Wave Invitational. It's been a great project for the Philippine Overwatch scene. So basically have these up-and-comers, you know, we, we are Team PH, we're making sure that we're trying to foster a little bit more, even though the scene itself is honestly imploding, to, to say the dead. least. It's, 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 a, it's a dead, that's for sure. And hopefully, you know, we're able to inspire Philippine players here and there to, what do you say, play a little bit more, play competitively, and maybe, just maybe, we can see some Philippine teams in the future if, you know, Blizzard gets their act together, so... That's really about a, a bunch of what is, but this is also a way for us to give back to our community. Without them, we wouldn't be able to go all the way to BlizzCon and you know make represent the Philippines. So it's just it's just been such a fun project, and this Cakes versus Overwind game is really one that has shown us the fruits of our labor. And I'm hoping to see many more great games like this in the our upcoming matches. And well, it seems like we're having a few technical issues. We'll be going back to lobby real quick and gonna be restarting that match for Mr. Shiver, who you really can't loot for some reason, which is highly, highly unfortunate. But 
it's it's Rialto time, okay? We this is gonna be a really good escort map. It's honestly my personal favorite as not only Lucia main, but just seeing how open it can truly be. And what can you say about Rialto? Do you think Overwind is going to be playing that double flyer composition again? Is that going to be the plan here? I think we'll probably be seeing like one flyer and an Ash uh, because I, we see, you know, the Dominici likes playing his Ash and Kethral's dominant power performance cannot be looked down upon. But I'm really hoping to see Shiver's signature Nanoblade because we have not, we have not, you know, got a glimpse of it just yet this match. And I'm hoping that you know they whip it out right now. Yeah, and just along with you know the along with the oily beer special. Yeah, and we're just making sure everything is a okay before we hop into the game. Okay, seems like we're all good in the hood, and let's get into our third match of this second match. <laughs> Whew, here we go again. Yeah, guys. see, I called it the Dominici, uh, the Dominici Ash and the Cathedral Farah. Yeah, here we go. I'm really again. surprised though that Wotash is sticking to BAP uh, this game because, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Wotash has been playing mostly Ana during the. Well, I I'd say I, I get this BAP these pick, in all honesty, Billy. The, the, you're playing a hit scan, you have a lot of range to work with. There have been some buffs to up the healing potential of the BAP, especially that regen field, to make sure he has that self sustain. And working with an Ash. App Matrix for the bullets, one under the Viper, is really, really potent thanks to the upgrades there. But it's it's highly unfortunate, you know, for Team Cakes. It, that, that was your restart. <laughs> that was your restart already. So it was, it's it really goes to show for, for Team Cakes, they are going to be looking to make sure that they can get the play on. It's going to be a little difficult though for Shiver. He's having a few issues here and there on his network. And maybe, just maybe, it's time for them to execute with the Ryan Diva to boots. Oh wow, that diva, that diva man got destroyed instantly there. Oh no, Blackrock and Dominici gonna be looking to stay out in front already. Going through a few hammer swings here and there. In the meantime, Olivier though will be able to get the trade on back. And Keldral on the inside. Control is in favor of Team Overwind. How unfortunate for Cakes, they already using the restart there. And in all honesty, Shiver saying it's at literally when the gates start. Kind of not what we want to see because those compositions are already out and about. I completely agree. Yeah, it's like, come on guys. It's it's already a game here. You you gotta you gotta say those things as soon as possible. Match. Yeah, it's it's the playoffs guys everything has to be taken at face value and we will see if Keltrel can just dominate in the faces of the opposition yeah uh, we're about to see the top five player actually like he's ready at 80 percent that's amazing for a nash player and dominici close to the bob always going to be a good butler there in the meantime shiver trying to get a little bit more this is going to be the genshi right now trying to get in position one more time and the dynamite going to get tossed yet again black rock the wood going to get one shiver does get a trade on back but without anyone dealing with this farah this is what we were talking about from team overwine farah beats junkrat especially in the skylines like this right now the ultimate advantage that Overwine has over Cakes is insane. Like, Shiver just swapped, and Overwine's actually playing with six. Because Kundak will get that, that, uh, that Valkyrie anytime soon. Yeah, Graviton Surge gonna be into play. Here we go with the Rock Barrage! And it's just an absolute cluster here from Team Overwine. They have just shown that you can be drunk with power here and still make two. Beautiful ult economy also, using only two ultimates to clean that one up. And big commendations there to Overwine. A lot of responsibility in this play. Insane. Like, uh, Roxy went, was, was actually pretty smart there with going for that shatter, I'd say, because, you know, tried to counter uh, ult for an ult. But I don't think they took into account Kethro's uh, insane uh, barrage speed. Yeah, it's just such big utility and such a big advantage right now for Team Overwind. They have all they need and more to do all they can. Wotash though gonna be popping that app. Matrix Shatter coming on through from Black Rap also. Going for the twin ultimates again. And this looks such a, it's such a well-oiled machine, Billy. This is literally an alarm clock that never fails to ring because they always have ultimates in the back with how they're cycling these things. This is not looking like a gold team whatsoever. This is looking pretty proper in the first wave playoffs. If you pay attention, that Guinness is already at 50%. Kethra almost has his barrage already. And just for those two ultimates use. And that that matrix, Blackrock used that to the best degree, getting that insane boosted uh, fire strike. 
And one minute left, and this is just gonna be Overwind making sure that their coaches are completely proud. South is rocked though in the back line, and Stereo has shown that it is always gonna be music and power. He gets rid of Keltrel and Kundak, the Forerunner and the Mercy cannot survive because they're in the air. Oily Beer also taking control of the ground, and if the Farah Mercy are gone, this is now Oily Beer's show. Reptar in the face of Blackrock, he will be rolling on down yet again. Kundak in the meantime with a Desperation Valkyrie from all the way to the other side, and is pocketing Dominici for the time being. Plaza defense here from Team Overwind. And at least they have a little bit of distance to work with. Oh, Rock Barrage though. Keltron making it rain. Billy, Billy, Billy. It feels like for Overwind, they're going to be able to hold the line still. And time is running out here for Cakes. Clutch bubble from Guinness there just prevented Oily Beer from going in the face of that far and just wiping her off the face of the map. Goodbye. It's Scorched Earth Policy. And that is what the Rocket Barrage is all about. Shiver right now, desperate to get in position. That's going to be the Reaper trying to make it through. Stereo now going to get stunned up, but someone is going to be needing to touch here. Coalesces though has been a big game changer in the New Wave Invitationals. And Alexei is going to make it happen. Grab the Surge though in the play with the Avengers right beside. It's all about the heals right now. Onto the attack line. Roxy Lalonde though will get the stun on. Keltro dropping on down without that gas, gas, gas. And this is looking really dire here for Overwind. Cake's not playing it. Absolutely clutch. They're doing all they can and more to hold the line and keep the fo progress onto the payload. But Bob, perfectly oh, placed there contest. from Dominici. What a contest here from Bob. And guys, well, oh no, this is, a, this is big. This is a big mistake here from Cakes. They are wasting so much precious time. This will give Overrun a chance to actually contest this. They could have killed it. The they, they still, there's still oh. a chance. And oh no, won't oh. Sash falling on Dan. That's gonna hurt the chances here, but Overrun, but Blackrock gonna be out in front again, Billy. The action doesn't stop. The Ryan and the Zarya still there. Rock and Rush, they're coming on through. And Team Cakes is trying desperately to get this first point. Can they survive though? That's gonna be the real question. Alex, he's ready with the coalescence again. We have seen the tides turn big because of the beam and finally team oh, cakes the they've Stereo's done it boop. oh my god billy that was way too close though i i almost thought they would have definitely thrown that game from not killing that bob yeah and uh, so close there black rock almost got if like black rock lived a little bit longer and the point was not taken he could have shattered them all and that was an insane sleep there by x fatalist by the way dax he stopped the fire barrage Every single time x Fatalist gets that sleep dart on, he just makes God's work happen. Death Blossom is also available here for Shiver. And we'll see if Team Cakes can get the push on again. Dominici and Keldral though will get those tags. And Overwind right now gonna be in a pretty good spot. Now even though their Ash isn't gonna get too much value here on the u bend unless they get oh, a really good second floor defense, they are gonna be getting that Dynamite. And that's what I was gonna be talking about, Billy. You are. Uh, you're anticipating my words. Because the Dynamite, basically it's a big fire grenade. And in points like that that is where the ash really is sublime compared to the mccree compared to the soldier standing sticks compared to the widowmaker i also like to point out that dom Ninchi already has bob and he just used that to contest the point just a while ago yeah it's, it's pretty big and if cakes doesn't kill it again that is going to be looking worse for where oh, they're the for the attacking block. side what a shattered block there from blackrock as you mentioned bob now going to be in the play here comes the pin and bob is going to be building on up with the damage yet again but that is going to be blackrock quite low beautiful save from Wotash, and the batiste Black. utility is so huge here overwind right now surviving still that lamp not only saved uh Black Rock for an insane amount of time. It, it was also in the range of Bob. They could not kill Bob. I feel, look at that positioning there. And Bob just in the edge of that one. A little bit of push, Roxy. Gonna be facing off against Black Rock. At least there's a kill because the Reinhardt overextending. But still, that is Overwise to win. And Wotas is proving the worth of the Bapsis. Like I said, Billy, a lot of utility, a lot of extra healing right now from the back. And working together with Dominici on the Ash, it makes a key difference. Stereo, though, on the Wrecking Ball, trying to get the Pile Driver on Shadow right now. And Black Rock has sundered the Earth. And here comes the Rocket Rush from Keltron instead. Another Another sleep dart though, making Billy Squill X Fatalist finding the target yet again. And it's gonna be an absolute mess here onto the U Junction by the docks. Trying to suggle out a little bit of that payload. The museum is looking for a little bit more, but Overwind right now looking pretty vintage on this defense. But Cakes in the meantime looking pretty fresh and sweet. Trying to make it through. Over time not taking on that. Grab the surge, gonna be absolutely huge from Guinness. But Oily Beer has whipped out the McCree. Finally, we see not the jump rat for the McCree, but is it too little too late? Seems like it's not the case. Cakes is right now keeping on with the pressure with the tracer to boot. And finally, they have the advantage here. Contest from Blackrock. Gonna be trying to run on away, but this should be Cakes having some open ground to work with. I don't think Blackrock should have suicided there. Yeah, completely agree. Like he, he went to the water because 
during overtime, your uh, respawn clock is extended. What? Oily Beer? What? Oily Beer with the reset? That is so dangerous. Uh, oh my god. I think he's gonna be swapping he, back. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, but even if he caps, look, look at this respawn timer. Yeah. It's still extended from the overtime. And I, what happened there? I'm, I'm, I'm very, very confused. No, you, you, you're from rolling through the water. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm very confused why he would do that. And now momentum here from Team Cakes kind of falling on the part. It, it feels like for Cakes, they're making these completely unfounded mistakes that it's very uncharacteristic from them. Not killing the Bob first point, resetting when they don't need to, because that spawn point is just right there, Billy. And Overwind, making sure there's no momentum for this third point push. And that's not giving all the bad taste of his own medicine. Dude, I'm, I'm just like, head scratches right there from Team Kick. So we have seen them play really, really well and play really, really smart. But they're honestly making these dumb decisions right now. Like, it's it's just pretty apparent because it's costing them so much. There, there is there is nothing else you can say about it. But at least you have Alexeed here trying to mitigate some of their mistakes and going for the cool lessons instead. It seems like though four kicks, they are going to be going for the Nanaboos on the Shiver. And we'll see if there's going to be a the Shiver show right now. Keltron though with the Reptile Rubber Ducky. You're the one and it's going to be bad time. Absolutely fun there for Overwind. They have such a good chokehold here on the narrowest part of the third site entrance way. And with 10 seconds left, oh, DC oh, also going to be here. I think Shiver disconnected. And it's the worst possible time for Team Shiver? Cakes. And we'll find out soon what the issue is. Oh, it's Tash. Oh, it's Tash. Ashley disconnected there. Oh, and, gosh. Uh, Wait, oh, who, no. who was Tash using? The the Babsies, mate. The Babsies. So no I uh, feel right yeah. now. No, and I feel that's gonna be pretty big, but I, I just want to go back to my points. Cakes, we we have seen better decision making from them from literally yesterday and the play the whole regular season and parts of the All Star week. Just head scratches right there. I I can't you know word it better because they didn't need to do those things and it cost it has yeah, cost them I a lot. I completely agree. I'm very much surprised. Like I I think. Uh, Cakes has uh, has uh, created the standard that we expect them to play, and right now uh, they're not meeting it. Uh, like, but I think it's because of, but I pressure? think right now they're they're doing it. Yeah, I think it's also because it's the playoff pressure. But you know, you know who's not breaking under pressure? Ex Fatalist and Shiver. Oh my God, that's that's true. Ex Fatalist, even Shiver. Who, okay, so double DCs here, <laughs> and we'll we'll just make sure that okay, double DCs. They're okay and alive. Double DCs, you guys get ten minutes total. Uh if one connects before the other, the other team time back starts ticking. Okay, there you go. Oh, so if ever it would be like if we're if we're still here <laughs> no, ten minutes from now, we'll, we'll be yeah, we'll be basically playing a five v five, which is interesting. So Valorant, okay. let's go to go to go to Valorant. Oh my god, <laughs> five minutes kicks. Okay, so Tash is back. So Takes does get five minutes to get the recon on. Uh, I'd say Overwine has three minutes still total. Okay, so. Where were we? We're just doing a little bit of admin work right now, making sure everything is A-OK. -okay. Unfortunate to get that DC, but the internet hasn't really been stable lately because of the rain PLDC. situation. No, it's like not just PLDC, it's just rain. And just, you know, you know, you know what's the so Kicks? Parang, we, we have seen them be exceptional. And it's kind of sad na it's happening on map number 3. They have to wake the hell up. This pause might be a blessing in disguise. Just be like, guys, stop throwing. That's it, you know? Just remember how we play. A little bit of tech talk here from the rest of the crew. And I think they should be golden. But now with only 9 seconds left, they, their two unnecessary mistakes have kind of cost them a full cap here. Like, as much as I love how Cakes is playing and how they eat that, they didn't need to be in a situation like this. Yeah, I completely agree there. And actually, right now, Kethral's Junkrat is doing extremely well because they not only countered Stereo, but also stopped the push with that huge tire. Yeah, and here we go again, Billy. We are back into the game. Death Blossom is available. Guinness, in the meantime, will be able to get that takedown again. And Oily Beer looking to stay on with the Junkrat. Overtime not ticking on down. Keep an eye out on Dominici. He's holding on to that Death Blossom. And as soon as he jumps on down, he's looking for that I feel instead. Spin around oh. and Oily Beer danger close. And that is just going to be the lamp keeping them alive. But a huge shout out here from Blackrock. Going to be still keeping this one up. 
Oh. And this is just a huge one there. Have you ever gone bowling, Mr. Billy? Because BlackRock has lined it up to get the perfect 300 right there. Overwine will defend. And Cakes, as we said, messing up because of those unnecessary mistakes and unable to capitalize on a full capture. On to like to say that Blackbeard's performance now is top tier. His shatters and his Reinhardt gameplay is insane. Yeah, Blackrock, you mean Blackbeard is from Team Cakes, and as we said, he has a. I said Blackrock. You said Blackbeard, but it's okay. Oh Don't God. worry about I'm it. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Bla Dude, uh, first, I gotta give shout outs to Blackbeard. Yesterday, he played. He, he actually played support because he couldn't really handle playing his DPS because of his injury. And I understand completely today why he's not playing. But, you know, it's it's sorely missed here for Cakes. While Olibeard does an amazing jump on the Junk Rat, if you're playing against a team that knows to play Far Echo, you, it's it's not the best thing. And as we said, with that handicap Cakes has right now, they cannot afford at all to make unnecessary mistakes. But they did twice. And what did that what did that cost them? One whole point. This is very winnable here for Overwine, especially since the first two points of Rialto are where the Farah can really shine. Cakes needed to have that full cap so they could have a last stand on the inside. And since they didn't do that, the odds are completely in favor of Overwine right now, unless Cakes brings out a miracle out of nowhere. Yeah, I I, I agree with you there, Dust. I think that they they need only Bear to perform. Like he's playing in a Grandmaster game. Yeah. That's actually not even a Grandmaster, that's a top, top 500, 500 game. No, he has to be, he has to whip out the Jake Rat. He has to be PvP. He has to be PvP. Houston Outlaws. Showing why Junk Rat is still alive. You know that kind of thing, but it's all up to fate. The wheels of fate are absolutely turning, and we will find out if Cakes can defend this corner. The fight is not over yet, but as we said though, the deck has been stacked against the defense right now. Here we go though, with the Orisa gonna be out in front again. The Sigma gonna be sticking around onto the right side as well. And Blackrock and Guinness whipping out that double shield. We have seen the double shield parts of the meta, and on an escort map type, it's really one of those compositions that you go on as much as possible. It's extremely strong, especially a Reinhardt Cup, because your damage output completely shreds a Reinhardt Shield, especially if you're running both a Fire and a Bap. Yeah, here we go again though, Overwind gonna be keeping things up. The Sigma is a really strong pick into the meta, even replacing D.Va in the dive sometimes because of that utility. But in a case like this, Overwind gonna be playing it a little bit of standard with the Ash to boots. Ash Baptiste, Mercy Farah, something a little bit of comfort here and now, especially on a map like this. But look at the backstab here from Cakes. And if they can keep this up, if they perform in a backstab manner on this corner every single time, stay away from the Farah Mercy, they will be proving us wrong and they will be just holding really, really well because they are basically mitigating the Keltro right now and staying away from his sidelines. Yeah, I think he needs to take the high ground away from Shiver and you know get that barrage as fast as possible because right now he's at 90 but he needs to be able to whip it out uh, extremely fast because uh, play, using Rocket Barrage in that tight corner is extremely good. Yeah, and sometimes for the Farah, it really just feels like it's those play for ults kind of heroes. But the Rocket Barrage is available again. Here comes a little bit of the setup. Oily Beer in the mid. Oh my god, this is why Oily Beer plays Junk Rats. Have you ever been to a repair shop and seen a tire explode? I guess Oily Beer has had that kind of situation and he gets triple in the air. Oh my god, that, that rip tire though. Uh, putting the Jake Rat, uh, giving the Jake out a run for his money actually. That's an insane uh, placement there. Second floor, second floor, out of nowhere, getting the blow up one more time. And this is gonna be the Reinhardt right now, gonna be sticking out at in front. The hammer swings are there. Here comes Keldral Doe, and it's time for the blade instead. Shiver is back in form. It seems like he was having latency issues earlier on. This time, the Nano Blade with the shutdown. And we see that this is a Genji world, and we are only living in it. It is absolutely stellar here from Cakes. They are just beating back Overwine, even though this is territory that Overwine should be able to handle. Yeah, I'm very surprised that Guinness and Blackhawk have not used their ultimates yet. Because if you accompany Guinness's ult with Blackhawk's ult, the getting the tanks to down to half HP alongside a damage, uh, the 50% damage boost of that supercharger should be able to wipe out the whole team of cakes. Yeah, and we'll if find they out. Use them properly. Exactly. And we'll find out as the fireworks do come. Keltrol does catch out Roxy Londa, I feel, from X, uh, from Axie, rather. A little too late, Shiver, though. In the meantime, we'll get that takedown. Supercharger also into play. And look at the ridiculous amount of damage Overwind is bringing to the table. Those beams are crossing, but that stereo out in front still. He has to shatter. He's looking for the kill onto the Orisa. Sticking around, though. Look to survive. 
but it's still Overwine in position with that Sigma. And a little bit more to get the punch on. Overwine takes the casualties, but they finally get the push into the plaza here. Yeah, but right now, you know, Shivers right there at the back line though. I really hope he doesn't get um Oh, he's gonna oh, get staggered. He got, he got staggered. He got caught, and now this is gonna hurt a lot for Team Cakes. Oh, beer, though. All the beer is in his element. So in Rialto, we say that the junk isn't the best pick, except in certain spots. This is a really good spot here for Oli Beer. One more shot onto the echo would do it, but he misses. And that could have been clutched there from Cakes. Now they have to drop on down instead. Still though, it's a troll bridge right now. Look at the kills go in favor of Overwind. They make sure that the Sigma pick works out in their favor. But Azaria will get Nana boosted. And Roxy Lalonde is full of energy to boot. Milo every day from the Zarya so far. It's two kills on the board already, keeping on with the beam. Dominate, she's gonna get that takedown, and finally, Overwine has opened things up as Stereo decides to go for the desperation contest that isn't gonna be loved anymore. So, in, that was a great uh, Zarya uh, duplicate there because the Zarya against the two tanks that really don't output that uh, a lot of damage could not deal with the Zarya, and because of that clutch uh, duplicate to give his tanks that bubble allowed them to survive and potentially kill the and also kill the Zarya pretty fast. And it's just absolutely instrumental right now, but here we go with Overwind, looking for a little bit more on that push. Double shields are still in the play, and as you were saying, that Zarya though, that mana boost on Suroxalon, they're looking pretty strong. But here comes Shiver now in the play, Hero Blade will not do much. A little bit of distraction oh. there, but that is just absolute destruction on the drip tire as well. Twin DPS ultimates have been shut down, but here comes the tank line instead out in front. Guinness trying to clutch that flux, but it doesn't happen. Gravity is not his friend whatsoever, and Cakes holding on to the front line. Good resurrection though from Kundak, but the the beam is a little too strong, and this should be Cakes going for the pincer attack and getting it cleaned up by the payload. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the res there was very necessary, especially with the fact like you're pretty much drawing out the fight way too long, and this should be the time to regroup, not to go for a res. Yeah, and Overwind doesn't have too much time. You'd expect them to have a better time back with the Echo and the Fara, but Cakes is putting in an absolute clinic. Maybe the Herdus Belly just being like, stop making stupid decisions, and they are doing all they can and more to be absolutely stellar. x the list. That's a free one there, thanks to the Shatter. But he is just always in position for those big purples. And this has been the Cakes style. It really feels like it's a layer of frosting every single time on a sweet ending with that Bio Grenade in full force. I think the, the the biggest problem right now that um, that Overrun is ha uh, having is because of the the placement of the shield of Black Rock, it's allowing Steer to get those free shatters. Like whenever he sees the shield broken or the Orisa use her shield, he either goes in front of her and just shatters them and you know, it's over. And without the Sigma trying to mitigate that approach, then it's not gonna happen whatsoever for the double shield. That's why you have the adjustable barrier. But here we go, the Rocket Barrage from Keltral taking a lot of damage, but they survive. Alexei though has been added boosted up, which is a really interesting pick there. And Oily Beer again in a proper spot. This is what Rialt is all about. There are just these segments where the Junkrat really does shine, but Overwine has gotten through the clutch choke. They are looking for the push on to the second point and it's do or die time already here billy the echo gonna be out in front guinness gonna be there as well here we go with the zara so looking for the two. Big, yeah, big high noon. exactly and that shiver high noon is exactly what we're looking for but he's gonna go for the flag instead we've seen this from the matchup against uber server riptar gonna be in the play i feel right now set on up and dominici turning into the reinhardt instead the trap though in complete full force and here we go right now with a little bit more of the action that's dominici and blackrock making an opening and overwind right now it's just a little bit away from getting this win. Yeah, right now, Oliver is about to be stabbing good. Oh no. Cakes is running out of space to work with. 17 and meters. The spawns, the Their spawns, spawns are, are too far. Lead. Stereo is going to be Shiver. going for the Wrecking Ball. And Overwine is looking to do the impossible and have finally won their first match. Book a date to the semifinals. And they have done it. They have improved immensely. The gold team no more. They are back. And they are looking in full view of their forces. Yeah, if, if there's one game, uh, one match where they need to like get their first win, it's th it's in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. It's incredible indeed. Cakes though with play of the game on the shiver, and we have booked to date meme card versus overwine. Who the thunk about those results? Absolute upsets on both sides, but that is gonna be victory there for team overwine. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm pretty sure right now Overwine is in high spirits because this is 
uh, a match well, a uh, match win that is well deserved. Yeah. And uh, after in after interview, interview muna. <laughs> interview muna, guys. So just no. <laughs> 30 minutes. Ten lang. If we had ads, if we had we ads, have... we could. <laughs> ano ba yan? If we had ads, we could. But ano, we don't. We so don't. it's 10. 10. 10 lang. 10 after the interview. So mga 15 total. And yet, tribute. So we're just talking to team yeah, 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 they were one. Depends. Depends if yeah, let's just, you know, let's just... Can, can, you know, prolong the interview. Yeah, let's, let's, let's find out. But before all of that, let's just break it down, Billy. You know, Rialto, and it's just kind of sad, honestly, for Team Cakes. Like I said, those costly mistakes costing them that victory. Yeah, I, I agree. That, like, I don't, re- I really don't think that they should have focused the Bob. They should have just allowed him to sleep. And you know, he, I mean, just honestly, kill- they didn't have, they didn't have the comp to instantly kill him. So it's either they, they all focused him all at once and kill him, even though he, you know, he's just freshly sleep. Either that or they run to the choke, they leave one on payload because, you know, the bob will disappear anytime soon. So they can just leave one person to choke and uh, on the payload and then all five players go straight to the choke and fight them uh, before they can even touch the point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just no proactivity there from Team Cakes. And even worse was the reset from Oily Beer. You, you are trying to get momentum right. You are trying to make sure that you're going to be able to get the push on. And as you said, the, the whole overtime timer hurting Oily Beer and his respawn. The spawn was literally just there. So, overall, it's it's just still little bits of time. It's heartbreaking. And, it's, it's, and especially since they had a win condition. If they make it to the inside, they win. It doesn't need to be them getting the full cap. They just need to make it onto it the, inside. the inside. But it didn't happen. It's Junkrat's, it's Junkrat's uh, home base territory you know, right home there. Home base, yeah. And it's just heartbreaking there because Cakes had shown us that they can do the impossible with the disadvantage but in the end it's just sadly not enough calm and, collective gameplay yeah. of overwine prevailing yeah. and we are going to be finally getting our semi-final brackets sets up our next match guys will be meme card versus o- versus overwine and we will be taking a 10 minute break after that one uh, after the interview here for overwine so overwine can get a little bit of a I'm bringing him up after the two one, please bring it up. Who do we have again? It's Guinness, right? It's Guinness. Okay, give me yep. a sec. And he's here. Okay, yeah, give me a sec though before he gets started talking, because we just want to make sure everyone is up to speed on to the bracket itself. So it's Meme Court versus Overwine. Like I said though, it's a day of upsets, and who would expect results like this? On the other side though, in the lower bracket, we're seeing a clear picture all throughout. And we have Cakes versus Ooh Watch. It's a really good rematch right there on one of our lower bracket rounds. It's gonna be Wash Pomies versus Uber Server. And whoever loses, uh, whoever wins that rather, will be facing off against Wamanagi. So it's funny Wamanagi again getting that pseudo buy in a way, even the lower bracket. But it's just a lot of implications there onto that side, and just really just impressive. This is not how I expected my upper bracket to look after two days, and we will find out I did I. after this upcoming match who will be. Moving on to the grand finals, but now it's time to get for a little bit of an MMK moment. Maala mo kaya? It's time to talk to Guinness of Team Overwine. Hello, guys. Hello, Guinness. Hello, what Hello. way to? Hi, Dad. Oi! Oh, no, it's no, it's no, the yeah. other caster. We've been looking for you. Mokisama kana dito na. On side of reporter. Or score side reporter. Okay, Mika, <laughs> since you're <laughs> Mika, since you're there, you you interview. Wait, Guinness. wait, wait, wait. Sorry. <laughs> Get, get the, it's on-site reporter. On-site, it's on-site, on-site, on-site because she's, she's part of the team. Mm, she's part of the staff. I didn't expect this, but <laughs> here we go. Mika, come here. It's Guinness is time to shine, though. But I'll ask the first question. What? How did you guys prepare for a match like this? And second one, how does it feel to finally get your first match win? Uh, we couldn't believe it, actually. When, when the last map uh, ended, we were like, what? Is it over? Did he just win? <laughs> we couldn't believe it. Um, like it, it was like there was like a, a deliberate pause. It's like, oh, okay, good job, guys. And then I was like, we did it, we won. <laughs> and everyone just started celebrating. Yeah, you won um, the first game, guys. Prepared, yeah, go ahead. Honestly, we were like um, rebirth helped us a lot in preparation. 
uh, we did a scrim against uh, Cakes. Um, we we're very thankful actually that they were so game to scrim with us and practice with us during the uh, off season or off playoffs. Um, and that kind of helped us prepare also in a sense. Um, we knew that Ordi Beer was is a really tough junk rat, so that's why we did double flyers. Um, we practiced double flyers uh, even in like uh, situations wherein it wasn't needed. Uh, in let's say in ladder, we were just doing double flyers just for the heck of it, just to warm us up and all that. It's Im- impressive. I I'm just absolutely flabbergasted and how you guys won it out so you were able to take the momentum on the first game but on the second game it kind of faltered did did you feel like you didn't go into your stat on your signature composition too early enough or was it just the nature of the map what what kind of gives there on hollywood um so we were confident with our double flyers coming in and then they countered with the diva mccree and we were like okay if it doesn't work let's just change and we after that we couldn't get our rhythm anymore and so uh, yeah <laughs> then we just we tried to figure out what was the problem and you know so we discovered or we assume we you know what do you call this concluded that it was the diva going after our flyers and so um blackrock and i were like okay once diva leaves we're gonna push in the reinhardt so I mean, we did that pala on no rialto that that strat but yeah so <laughs> The Diva was a problem. It's, it's amazing how you guys, you know, just adjusted there. And do you feel like they're on Real, so you were able to defend to the best of your capabilities? Did you feel like you were able to, like, oh, sh- thank God we were able to prevent them from getting the full cap? Because were you guys aware of where exactly Oily Beer and his Junkrat could, like, shine on a map like that? Because you had that map pick for the third uh, part of the set. Right. Um, yeah, we were... We were like, our main focus really was to spot Oily Beer. Like, we were like the moment he disappears, we're gonna have to look for him because he's gonna probably pull off an ult and all that. So, we really we assigned the double flyers, especially the Echo, to really watch out for Oily Beer. Um, we were in Rialto on defense first sector. They we were almost gonna full hold it, and then they pushed us in overtime. I think. I think that was just nerves. I think everyone was just, um, you know, getting nervous that okay, this is it. We could win it here, and then all of a sudden, you know, comps were getting a little messy, and all that. We had to stabilize and calm down a bit. And yeah, you've done it. You've done it. And you know, it's I just gotta commend you guys. Really, you know, it's it's just grit right here. You didn't have the best regular season, but you had flashes of brilliance here and there. And now, you are in the upper bracket semifinals. One more match, and you are in the grand finals and in the money. It's ridiculous how far the seventh seed has gone. And what, what is your key to success? What is your freaking tale of the tape here? Has it just been the work and the coaching? Has it been just trying to find your identity? You, you know, those things. This is, what is the overriding way to go? Um... Honestly, I think it's it really boils down into the coaching and mentorship that Rebirth uh, gave the team and Billy once in a while when Rebirth would ask for backup. But um, aside from that, it's also the willingness of the team to you know be there throughout all the whipping of Rebirth <laughs> and stick through it. So <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Ikaw, uh, Billy, do you have any questions? Not really, because. This is a well-deserved win for you guys. I really gotta say, your improvement and your teamwork right now, very, very incredible. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, okay, okay, wait. We have two special questions pa tayo muna, Guinness. First, from Coach Rebirth, I know you're just there. Hey, anything you want to say to your team? <laughs> well, honestly, I already just jumped into the Discord and just shouted at them. Good job, guys. <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, what I really want to say is, good job, honestly, like, really good job. I'm honestly super butt clenched the entire time in the Prialto game. And I was like, oh, no, come on, you can do this. So really good job. And uh, you guys really deserve this because you also, like, uh, sat through all my sessions my my um boring lectures whipping sessions yeah whipping <laughs> sessions also so yeah 
really well deserved. And look, you guys are actually doing way better than when you first started out. For sure. Not looking like a goal team whatsoever. And there's one more. Hey, where's our courtside reporter? She needs to do one question to you. Okay. <laughs> you have to, Guinness, you have to get her on. She's part of the staff. She's part of the show. I'm, I'm right here. Okay, I'm perfect. right here. Go, go bring out the met. national experience for us. Just for an amazing what? thing. Just give me one. Just humor me, Mika. Why? We haven't seen you in so what long. Are you, about? you didn't even play, Mika. You didn't even play. But it's all up to you. The floor is all yours. What am I saying? What are you talking about? <laughs> I was just here. I love it. What? I love it. I love it. So, guys, if you guys have any needs for hosting, there you go. The fabulous Mika Pavel right I, there. I, I, <laughs> but, oh, so nga. Oh, I'm, on, I'm on cheerleader duty okay. here. I turn it over to, to Guinness over here. I'm okay. so proud. I'm, I'm happy. I'm so proud. Ito na lang, Mika. Uh, Mika, Mika. Ito na lang. What, uh, how do you feel right now about Team Overwine reaching this far? Yo. Mm, sige. Kayo, like I, I am so I am so proud and they totally deserve this after all of those R's of everything, everything, all of the VOD reviews, all of the sessions, all of the scrims and everything. And maybe finally Guinness and I can have a movie date. <laughs> Ay, wow. Wow, okay. So again, the floor is all yours. Any shout outs you wanna both do. Uh um shout out to the team. Okay. And to Everyone who helped, especially Rebirth, Billy, Fascinate, and everyone else, especially to the NWI teams who were so game to scrim with us, Shempre. That's incredible. Incredibly done. By Team Overwind, they won the match that they needed to the most. And now they are basically in, I think they're in the top cuts of that placing, which is a far cry from where they started. So thank you, Guinness and Amika, for your time. So we'll see you guys maybe into the next one. If you take this one, another potential upset. And before we get into our next match, I, I mean, we'll take a little bit of a break for our teams. But before we get to our next match, Billy, let's break that, that last match before we go on, you know, a little bit of a standby. Two maps, two over wine, one, two cakes. Tail of the tape here, buddy. Yeah. Um, this is incre This is a... Um... You know, uh, I'd say the an underdog day, to say the least, Mr. Dax, because you get the the fourth seed team beating the first seed team, and you get the seventh seed team beating the third seed team. So, in this upcoming match, you know, anything can happen. I can honestly say, like right now, standings don't matter. It's all about which team can play better than the other ridiculous how impressive Overwine has improved and they basically find a way to deal with Cakes and their roster. It's unfortunate for Cakes, especially on that reality map, hurting their chances there. But I really feel like the thing that hurt Cakes the most was the fact that they didn't have Blackbeard available. Unfortunate timing for the injury and we have seen him be such a strong hit scan that could have been a good deal breaker against a double flyer but you have to play with who you have and even though Oily Beer is an amazing amazing junk rat in terms of the matchup on paper it's not gonna fly beautifully done though by X-Fatalist as well as Shiver you can really see the clutchness from them especially the Ana but when the going gets tough Overwind even looking tougher and we are gonna be going for a little bit of a break the Overwind needs that breather and we'll be taking 10 for true. them and we will be right back for our semifinals whoever wins this next match is going all the way till Friday. They are going to have a little bit of break. We're going to be going to the lower brackets on Wednesday and Thursday. And then whoever is the winner of this upcoming match will have that one map buy for the grand finals. It's do or die time for Meme Court versus Overwine. And it's going to be really, really interesting. This has been the first wave playoffs day two. And we are not done yet. One more match coming your way in just a bit.